face your friends, don't get it. Come on, let me don't need it. Let us look at page 22. Today we are going to be going at how to organize the informative speech. And you're like, what? Organize, Amanda? Haven't we already done that? And I will say, yes, we have essentially done that, but we are talking about organizing your main points because it's going to be different from our last two speeches that we've done based upon the purpose of the informative speech altogether. So the first thing I want you to do besides holding on page 22, because this down here at the end, bottom is what your homework is. If you see at the bottom of page 22 right here, it says for your homework, post to e-companion the following. So we're going to go over how to do all of that today, but and you'll be prepared for your homework. But for the purpose of lecture, go ahead and turn to page, well that's weird. Where's the informative speech description? Oh, on the back. That's why I gave those back. Okay, that's right. I forgot. So it's on the back of your evaluation sheet from your photograph speech. And let's look at this and talk. Now, you may not understand everything that's on this informative speech description sheet today, but over the course of the next three weeks, we'll be going over this material. And so by the time your speech comes around, everything on here will be made. So let's take a look. So an informative speech is the most basic type of speech that individuals are giving. All you are doing is reporting on information. Your job is to essentially be some kind of teacher or instructor, or if you think about it, tour guide, or maybe news broadcaster. All these individuals work on a level that doesn't have some type of bias that isn't trying to encourage you or persuade you to do something, but all they're doing instead is simply giving you information, period. We will become better knowledge, uh, think of yourself as an encyclopedia, almost, or if you wanted to call it a Wikipedia. This is what your job would be. It's not there to persuade us, it's not there to encourage us to believe something, it's not there to encourage us to take action. Think of it as the who, what, when, where, why. That is what the informative speech is. And people are giving informative speeches all the time. I anticipate in your life you will give an informative speech more often than you will a persuasive platform speech. I believe persuasive platform speeches you will give if you decide to go into some type of you know, urging of movement, urging of um, activism, urging of uh, maybe a position in a a higher power, if you will, if you're going on a job interview, that's a persuasive speech, essentially. But persuasion, when we do platform speaking, essentially it prepares you for the everyday arguments that we have with people. And the same thing goes with informational speaking. But in your classes, when you are oftentimes asked to do a presentation, I anticipate it's not to persuade your audience, correct? It's typically like, this is what I read, this is the report that I did, this is who I studied, this is what we researched. So informative speaking is really helpful to you as a student, but beyond that, informative speaking will be helpful in your everyday life, understanding how to organize a message. And the fun part about this is I want you to make this as fun and easy on yourself as possible. There is no need for us to all sit here and struggle thinking about a topic that has to be so dynamic and oh my goodness. I have to come up with an advanced topic that I have not, no clue about. Absolutely not. I want each of you to think about what you've already kind of told us in this class. Think about the interests that you have or the activities that you do or the people who you have um, spoken about or the, the sports that you participate in, the movies that you love. What the informative speech should be is you talking about something that you already know a lot about. Why would I want you to speak about something that you already know a lot about or are excited about? Yes? So it's one of your, you're delivering a message more clearly because you know what you're talking about. Okay, you'll deliver, what does the word more clearly mean? What do you mean by that? Your, your information will be more precise. Okay, the information will be more precise. Good. Why would why confident? You've experienced it. You've experienced it. And you will know the whole. 
story about it. Absolutely. You all know the whole story about it already. You've already been, you're like, please, I am the biggest Lakers fan. Nobody can touch me on that. I know all the information. Already you have that kind of confidence behind you, right? Dance. I'm not nearly as educated as you are. Soccer, I have no clue. But hearing it from an expert, you're like, please, I can tell you do this in my sleep, Amanda. That's the kind of speech we want you to give. Because also the confidence then communicates to the audience. You are more likely to deliver extemporaneously. And when you talk about something that you're excited about, what do we get? Excited, absolutely. If I make you all come in here and today I'm going to make you talk about drones. Some of us may be like, all right, well, I found some interesting information about drones, but it's hard to get excited about something that you're not already passionate about or interested in. So that's why I really want you to work smarter, not harder in that. I want you to pick a topic that you already know a lot about, that you have in your back pocket, that it's going to be fun to look up new information or like a fun visual aid to show your audience. And it's going to be fun to find research because you're like, shoot, I love this. I can't wait. Does that make sense now? only thing is that it should be, like it says, mature and at a college level. We do not do a, so that you know, a how-to speech in this class. Many teachers do a process speech that is included in an informative speech, how to make chocolate chip cookies, how to put together this amazing um, macrame necklace made out of macrame. Those are all speeches that are a little bit below our level. Now we can make our topics, regardless of how juvenile they may, you may think they are, or is that important, or is my audience going to be interested? Yes, because that's what we learn how to do in this class. We learn how to make a topic appeal to our specific audience. So ensure that you are making something at a college level. Uh, that just means, um, you do, so talking about cartoons, yes, talk about cartoons, okay? That's still an important and relevant part to us, so I don't mean mature in that sense. I just mean let's take on a topic that's worthwhile, that they're going to get something out of, that they'll be able to re go back to in their kind of daily life. And we'll make, when it comes time for introductions, I'll show you some really fun tricks to make your speech relate to your audience and the different types of tactics we can use to illuminate them to why this is important for me to know about Snoopy. Yes? Something like that. Does that make sense to y'all? All right, cool. That being said, let's go on. So this assignment, second paragraph, um, you're expected to follow a particular pattern of organization. So when I say the words particular pattern of organization, that's what we're doing today. I mean about your main points. How are we going to organize those main points? Um, uh, so chronological, spatial, and topical are what we're looking at. And particular emphasis is going to be placed on you and the supporting materials that you develop, that you give us, that you in, uh, utilize within your speech to make that purpose come to inform us. You are going to need to do research on this topic, and so that means research outside of you. Everyone's like, well, I'm a person, I've gone there, so can't I be a source? You are the source. Your speech is your, you clearly, is you. That's pretty much what you've written, but you need to find information outside of yourself. So what does that mean? That means we're going to do a day where we go over research and how to find materials, not only in the library, but additionally on the internet, and making sure that they're qualified sources to use. So you are more than welcome to use all modes of research and information, but we're going to need to find information outside of ourselves to support our own claims, maybe to give a different description or a different detail, or you can use an expert testimony of somebody who has also experienced it. Or perchance you give a statistic from a study that has been done about Laker fans or something to that extent. So we'll go through it. But you are required to have at least three outside sources. And those sources are going to need to be stated um, out loud in your presentation. And then it's also going to be uh, written inside an outline. And then you're also going to develop a works cited page. And we'll talk about how to do all of that when it comes time to research. Sound good? The 
Uh, <coughs> let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, so you are going to turn in an outline for this speech. This is the speech that we will outline. There is going to be a lecture on outlining. There's sample outlines, and everything's available to you in eCompanion. The handout for outlining is in the packet, but the lecture is online already, and there's samples online. I will, of course, do this lecture also in class to make sure that you are fully aware of how to outline, but it's 50 points of your entire presentation. So we want to make sure that we're good with that. So you will be turning in a written form of your work to me. Beyond that, you are expected to follow all the basic principles of good delivery, which we have gone over in class, our hand gestures, our body, our facial expression, our language use, our ability to use the space in the room, how we in, uh, incorporate visual aids, which speaking of that, yes, you are required to have at least one visual aid that aids in the development of your speech. Remember, it's there as support. It's not something to stick up in the background and you know never refer to. Think of it as a supporting material on its own. You want to clarify something, you put up a visual aid. You want to make sense of what you're talking about, throw up a visual aid. You want to get that audience's interest and then be like, shoot, I didn't know it was that pretty. Put up a visual aid. Sound good? All right, so that is the criteria that I want you to know about before we get into our topic organization. Anybody have any questions about what I spoke about on that page? All right, let us then come back together and flip back over to page 22. Mm -hmm. We first want us to go over here. And we are going to look at This idea. There is something called the general purpose of a speech, the specific purpose of a speech, and then the thesis of a speech. These three steps are there to help you as a speaker come to narrow your focus so that your topic can fit into a specific time frame that you are given to present. It helps you to narrow your ideas, to narrow your focus, and know what you can accomplish in order to be the most informative that you can be. I'm going to go through each of these terms, and let me describe what it means to you. Now, how many of you have taken that basic English class again? Any, like the one, like the one or A, or have any of you ever seen the idea of an inverted triangle? Anybody going into journalism on the PR or something? All right, an inverted triangle in writing is essentially how it shows you the structure of a five-point paragraph. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. But if this is your introduction and this is your conclusion. We know that our introduction is set up in an inverted triangle. Now, don't worry too much about that, except for this concept over here of the general purpose, specific purpose, and thesis statement. It's done upside down in an inverted triangle because it starts with the most broad concept or the most broad understanding of what this speech is about. Every single speech that you give will fall under the category of one, two, or three general purposes. And let me say those to you. They are to entertain, to persuade, and to, oh my gosh, right? Say it out loud. Who said? Inform. Yes, to inform. What do you think your general purpose for this speech will be? <laughs> Fantastic. Let's go and we'll write your homework together. Are you ready? Down at the bottom of your page where it says, this is what you're going to turn in for your homework. You see that on page 22? Next to general purpose, capitalize the word T-O, or just two, sorry, capitalize the T with the two. And then go ahead here and write the words inform. That's it. You're already done with one line one of your presentation or your, your homework. Now we know that this is your purpose. This is the most broad purpose of the speech, but this is also the purpose. The purpose is not to persuade, 
The purpose by default, of course your audience will be entertained, but it's not something like a comedy routine or an after dinner speech or a, I don't know, a roast. Those are things that fall under to entertain. In this case, your job is to inform. And this reminds you that every material that you choose, every visual aid that you choose, every sentence that you choose should seek to what? Inform! So good. So it's a reminder for all of us. Yes? All right. Now, as the pyramid gets a little bit smaller, we go into something called a specific purpose. You know this as your... <coughs> Specific purpose. You know this as your, what does it say here? Central idea. All of us have had a central idea already for you to get to know me better. Huh? This past one was for you to understand how this signifies mm. In this case, this is specifically what you will be informing us about. Specifically what you'll be informing us about. Right now, we know we're getting an informational speech, but now let's specifically talk about what informational speech we're getting. So some general rules to ensure that you're on the right track for informational speaking is to know that the specific purpose should be stated with the word about in it. The word about lets us know that you're going to inform us about something. And that's a really great way to make sure that you have an informative speech. I say that because if you say to inform my audience that, Typically, it will be persuasive. Let me show you two different ways. To inform my audience about SMC. I know that that's an informative statement. I know that you are going to be informing me about it. To inform my audience that SMC is better than El Camino, the that says that we are going to make a statement about what SMC is. And thus, it becomes a tricky situation whereby now you're trying to persuade us. Does that make sense to y'all? So by throwing in the word about, you can be sure that you're having an informative speech. We don't want any persuasive statements in our specific purpose. That means that you need to avoid the words should or shouldn't or good or bad or right or wrong or better or less than. Those are persuasive speeches. So hold on to those arguments that you want to make to persuade my audience that yoga is the healthiest way of living. Did I say the word about? What did I say? Healthiest. Okay, healthiest. And I said to perform my persuade my audience that yoga is healthiest. So people are always like, well, no, I just want to talk about health, yoga, like what it does for your body and whatever. Sure, then you should say to inform my audience about yoga. Does that make sense to you? Not to inform my audience that yoga is the best form of exercise. That's persuasive. Sure, you could, but without the trick, it suggests that you still are what? By the, uh, the part that comes after. These aren't like surefire ways, but it's a good way to indicate that you've done it one way. But do you see the difference in those? Okay, good. So it's really important just to do a critical read. Does my general purpose statement suggest that? This is an informative speech. Now, when writing our specific purpose, do you mind just, you know what, here, let me go. Do you mind, do you mind being this close one? Yes. There's a fire. I'll grab you first. 
<clears throat> to write our general purpose, all you're going to do is bring down the words from above to inform. Who are you informing? The president? Oh, okay, good. So we'll just write that. My audience. And what word do we want to put here? Yes. About blank. Period. And this blank is where you are going to put in your topic. But not just any topic. We need to say your narrowed topic. This speech is between five to seven minutes in length. That means you have five minutes to speak. And all of you know that you can talk for five minutes with a speech that you haven't even done research on, right? Or wrong. Right. Thus, how am I going to tell you about a concept like yoga in five minutes? So we have to start to think about what areas of our topic do we enjoy the most? What do we think is going to be most exciting and interesting about that topic to our audience? That although the history may be important to us, will it be as important to the audience or are they more interested in maybe the present day situation and how that works? So something like, um, uh, if we were going to talk about something like feminism, Right? Like, oh my gosh, what a huge topic to take on. So would it be as exciting for us to talk about where feminism came from? Or like, let's talk about what the role of feminism is in today's society. So that may be a way that you could narrow your focus a bit. So what I want you to know is that with five to seven minutes, and for the purpose of balance, your introduction is going to be between 45 seconds and one minute, and your conclusion should be about 35, sorry, 35 seconds to 45 seconds. That means that the rest of the time can be designated to your main point. So, how much time does that give us for your main points? What do you think? If this is a minute, let's just say, and this is 45 seconds, we now have five minutes and what? And 15 whole seconds. Good job, everyone. Five minutes and 15 seconds to work within our main points. So before, it was suggested that you had two to three main points for your speech. This time, it is encouraged for you to have between two to five. One main point doesn't make any sense. It's not going to be organized. And two is our minimum. And then five is our maximum, meaning we could designate a minute to each main point if you wanted to or break that down to 250 and 250. How much do you want us to get? Or any number <coughs> in in Does that make sense to y'all? So you are going to have the opportunity to have a good amount of main points if you think that your topic or speech is going to need it. Does this all make sense to everybody right here in your timing and the narrowing of the idea? Let's talk about this narrowing of the focus a bit more. But in order to do so, what I want you to do is look at the first part of your page here. It says, topics of informative speeches can fall into five different categories. This will help you start to brainstorm a topic that you may want to look at. You can choose between 
speeches of people, as it says there, places, events, concepts, and objects. And let's go through each of these, and I'm going to spout out a bunch of ideas or examples as I talk about it. But actually, what I'm going to do is move over to this board. Since we have the room, can everybody turn with me? Yes? Everybody's like, oh, Amanda, that makes sense. Great job. No. Also, you get now, you get $5 for so you for just a second. Is something out? What is, does it look like it's one of those? No. Is it just low? Low. All right. When we talk about speeches of people, this can be a speech about a person, a group, a movement, a organization, a team, a band, but people in specific. Do you have a favorite artist? Do you have a favorite actor? Do you have a favorite actress? Do you have a favorite singer? Do you have a favorite band? Do you have a favorite sports player? Do you have a favorite sports team? Do you have a favorite, uh, let me see, do you have a favorite political activist? Is there somebody in your culture's history that you would like to speak about? Is there an important and influential member of society that you would like to speak about? Is there an important or influential poet, dancer, writer that you would like to speak about? Any of these individuals or groups can be or are fair game. The only thing that I want to remind you about people is that people should be individuals who are outside of yourself and outside of your everyday social group. Meaning we should talk about socially influential, relevant contributors of society. Does that make sense to everybody? So this speech wouldn't be talking about your grandpa because that's what your last two speeches but this one be talking about like your dog because that's what those last, sorry, no. that's what your last two speeches were. This speech is about others. So does that make sense to y'all? So let's talk about something. So if I did want to, let's say, talk about the LA Lakers, and this is simply for fun, and because I know that we have um, Andre as our expert in the back. No pressure though to speak on behalf of all LA Lakers fans. Are all other LA Lakers fans in this? Oh yes, okay, good. So we have some Lakers fans. Now if I wanted to talk about the LA Lakers, how long could this speech potentially be? Yeah, I could probably start speaking back in 1947 and never stop, right? And just keep going. So man, that's a lot of information to take on. So there are ways to narrow the focus about, to inform my audience about the Los Angeles Lakers. What? Ooh, fun. Oh, because of the lakes. Cute. All right. <laughs> Didn't know. Who would have known? I could essentially narrow my focus to talk to you about, to inform my audience about the Lakers beginning in where? Yeah. Oh my gosh! And now I know that this speech is only going to be about their time in, everybody? Yeah. Minneapolis, right? Great, who would have known? It's a small part of their history, it's a small part of the interesting story, but that could be accomplished in something like five minutes. So we can say that we wanted to do the Minneapolis ones, and let's say I wanted to talk about the Lakers today in Los Angeles, how can I narrow this focus? What do you think? What? Huh? A specific what? Oh, sure. So, like Kobe's last season, which is the 2015 to 2000. 
and six teams L.A. Laker season. And now I've narrowed my focus. Does that make sense? I can talk about it when it was the dream. Is it the dream team? Ah, oh, Team USA, never mind. Totally different. Let's go back to this idea of Kobe. Right? Let's talk about the L.A. Lakers player Kobe Bryant. But we could talk about Kobe. To inform my audience about Kobe Bryant's, Kobe Bryant, how many things could we talk about with Kobe Bryant? A million and one things. So we could even narrow our focus a bit and do what? Talk about Kobe Bryant's last season. Kobe Bryant's last season? Or simply Kobe Bryant's basketball career? That means we don't talk about his personal life. We don't talk about his organization. We don't talk about all of his philanthropy. We simply talk about his basketball career. Does that make sense to y'all? So narrowing, narrowing, narrowing down your idea is going to be the most important thing here. So I'd like to inform my audience about Jay-Z. Fine. To inform my audience about Jay-Z's trilogy album. The, thank you, The Blueprint. Or to talk about Jay-Z, so now we know that that's what we're going to talk about in the trilogies. Or to talk about Jay-Z's, uh, one of Jay-Z's, or to talk about Jay-Z's uh, empire outside of music. Now we know we'll talk about clothing, and we'll talk about philanthropy, and we'll talk about production, right? These are all different ways that you can narrow that focus. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Then we can also do events. So events, by definition, or anything that has happened, that is happening, that is going to happen. And in the broad sense of terms, you can make an event like something that has happened. So maybe I want to talk about a historical event. I want to talk about uh, uh, DEA. The Vietnam War, the Tet Offensive, the events of 9-11, the Columbine shooting, right? These are all events that have happened. Feel free that if there's a significant event that you enjoy or that you like or that you want to talk about or that you've studied a lot in history class that you're like, shoot, I did not even know that existed. Uh, internment camps in California. Right? That's something that's informative, something that not a lot of people may be even aware of because of how our history likes to teach history here in the United States. Right? These would be fun things to talk about. You can also talk about things that are happening. So do you all go to specific events on a regular basis? Think about this. Do any of you have specific cultural events that you celebrate every year? That would be super fun to learn about. Do you have specific holidays that you celebrate? So we could. We could do Christmas. We could do Easter. We could do Halloween. We could do Dia de los Muertos, which I've heard uh, some good ones on that. You could do um, something like, what is Cinco de Mayo and why do we celebrate it? What is uh, uh, Passover? Why do people celebrate that? Do you go to any events? I'm going to talk to you about Coachella, the Electronic Daisy Carnival. I'm going to talk to you about... Halloween Horror Nights. I'm going to talk to you about Not Scary Farm. I'm going to talk to you about the 4th of July Spectacular. I don't know. But what events could we do? Or events that are coming up. Are you involved in any campus organizations or community groups whereby they are going to be having an event that your audience may want to know about or be informed about or get interested in? This would be a great a great place to put that. But again, with events, just like people, your focus should become narrowed enough. Yeah, or are you stretching? Stretch it out your knees. Anybody else have a question about these ideas of events? No? And the other one that we want to talk about before we go into the next is something called a concept. So a concept, you can think of this as a way of thought, a theory, a philosophy, to inform my audience about Dadaism. 
Catholicism, postmodernism. Of course, that's a huge topic to take on, but these would be concepts. They would also be, are any of you having, do all of you have a specific major that you're studying? I bet you do. Within that major, there are theories. So if you're a psychology major, something like, to inform my audience about cognitive dissonance, to inform my audience about social relativism, to inform my audience about string theory. Those could be some concepts you could talk about. But other concepts that are super fun, think about like natural phenomenon, to inform my audience about earthquakes, tornadoes, black holes, eclipses, uh, waves, I don't know, I made that up. Tide pool, yes? These would be like concepts that you could talk to us about. So think about those, but the reason that I bring these three up first and address what they are and how to narrow your focus of them is because it's going to build upon your thesis statement. So let me move over here really quickly and just say that if we have now to inform my audience about and then this narrow topic, I can now come up with a thesis statement because that's going to be the next purpose. I can't just say to inform my audience about the LA Lakers. You'd be like, what? That was just my statement. No, we need ways that you're going to inform us about those what? LA Lakers. And those are main points. Remember? It's the how we tell you what our speech is about. So in order to write your thesis statement for not only your speech, but also for your homework assignment, you are simply going to write <laughs> down your specific purpose. So it will be something like to inform my audience about blank your topic here. Okay. Put that again, your narrow topic here, I will describe, how many main points are you going to have for this speech? Two to five, good. One, two, three, four, and five. You don't have to have five between two and five. You will put your main points in these spaces. And then I will know what your thesis statement is and what your speech is about. Going back to the inverted triangle, we have now become our thesis statement, or led to our thesis statement, which is the most specific statement about your speech. And this is what your speech is about and how it will be explained. What my speech is about and how it will be explained. Does that make sense to everybody? Oh, okay, good. Yes, okay, great. Now, it says here, what is the pattern of organization used? And I told you at the beginning that the pattern of organization relates to how you organize your, say it with me, main, main points. Good! So it's, pattern of organization means how you're going to organize those main points. Here, you are going to see three different types of patterns of organization. Depending upon what category it falls into, events, concepts, objects, places. What? Oh, places, thank you. This is going to determine what pattern of organization you use. So if you say, hey Amanda, I have a person, yeah, say we're all doing the LA Lakers, you know that is going to fall under one of these particular patterns of organization. It is going to dictate to you how your main points are most effectively organized for your audience to hear about your topic. 
Let's start off with the three that we just spoke about so you can understand how it works. If you have a person, an event, or a concept, your pattern of organization is going to be chronological order. What does chronological order mean? In order of time. So typically meaning in order of time. Thus, you can ask yourself or suggest yourself a couple of ideas. This would mean starting at the beginning and going to the end. Or maybe it's in an order of production and release. Or perchance just a specific part of their life from beginning to end. So what does this mean? Well, let's talk about how we narrowed our focus again. So if I wanted to say something like, to inform my audience about the basketball career of Kobe Bryant, now I know that it's a person, so I know it's chronological logical order, and then I know that I'm simply talking about the basketball career. So where did his time period, where did his basketball career begin? In what? That we would maybe want to make note of. Overall. Kobe Bryant's basketball career, we could start with his experience in uh, high school. Oh my gosh, y'all. So, to inform my audience about the basketball career of Kobe Bryant, I will first discuss his high, high school. school career. Then I will discuss his career with the Lakers. And if you wanted to break it down because it's so long, you could do like the career with his Lakers before or with Shaq. Something like that, and his career with the Lakers after Shaq. Or you could say like the first, because how many years has he been with the Lakers? Mm -hmm. 40. His first 10 with the Lakers and his last 10 with the Lakers, right? Within each of those main points, now we know that we're going to talk about the specific parts of his basketball career, right? So we can talk about any of the awards he's won or perchance any of the amazing accomplishments that he's had or the injuries that he's had and all of that can fall underneath each of these ideas because if you think about it we could talk about Kobe in a gajillion a million and one ways and we could probably have like 20 million different types of main points but when we do it chronologically then we can stick to a specific standard so we could say something like his high school you know first 10 second 10, and these could be my main points. And then within each of these, you could have specific subpoints. And it could be like his, um, I don't know, his accomplishments, his awards, I don't know, and his, and if that's it, that's it. <laughs> and then, of course, you go into this one, you'd be like, oh, his accomplishments and his awards. And then the last one, guess what you talk about? Oh my gosh, his accomplishments however you want it, and because I'm not an expert on basketball or Kobe, I don't know why I'm doing this example, but it, for you all, hopefully this makes sense about at least how to do these main points. It happens, again, with, like we said, with Jay-Z, and I use Jay-Z because I love him, but I have a question that, in this case, in the employment of Kobe, is it okay if we just start with a video? A what? Now, the other thing that we can look at are these other types of topics. We can look at something called an object. An object is anything that is tangible, something you can touch. I want to talk about a specific car. A dog or an animal would fall under objects. All of you carry around technology that you're obsessed with every day. That would be an object you could inform us about. Maybe even a computer program or some kind of app. Although you can't necessarily touch it, it would still be considered some type of object if you would like to talk about it. A camera, a specific shoe that you're obsessed with. Whatever this may be, you can bring it in and talk to us. So think about some type of object. Or if you wanted to, you could also talk about a place. 
A place is anywhere you can go. Do you want to talk about a place like your hometown? Maybe a specific country? Maybe a specific city? You can also talk about a place like a fun location, Disneyland. You could talk about Santa Monica Pier. You could talk about Santa Monica College. I could talk to you about the Getty Center. Talk to you about the, the New Broad Museum. One of my students did that last semester. It was super fun. We got to learn about it. So a place is anywhere that you can go to. Now, if you have a place or an object, your speech will be organized what we call spatially. Spatially, if you will look over here, is called in order of direction. This means that we are going to do something like top to bottom, left to right, bottom to top, north, south, east, west. If you think about it, if you've gone to a place before, at Disneyland, the first thing that they hand you is your ticket and a map. They don't want you to get what? Because if you do, then you're going to have a great experience? No. If you're going to travel to Las Vegas for the first time and you've never been there before, are you going to look at a map or are you going to be like, oh, well, I'll just get there whenever I get there? You could, but it may not be the most effective use of your time or maybe make sure that everything that you get to see. So, for example, I did have a student who narrowed their focus to inform my audience about the Las Vegas Strip. What they did is they knew it was a place, so they wanted to spatially organize it. And how they did that was by saying, I will first talk about the southern part of the strip. Then I will talk about the middle of the strip. And finally, I will talk about the northern part of the strip. Because they're like, I want to talk about hotels, and I want to talk about clubs, and I want to talk about restaurants, and I want to talk about how many, that's like 20 million main points. No, no, those can all become sub points. Absolutely. So when we say that our, if to inform my audience about the bottom, the middle, and the top, in the bottom part, we can say the hotels, the clubs, and the restaurants you can see there. Then the hotels, the clubs, and the restaurants you can go to. And the, finally, at the top of the strip, you can talk about the, oh my gosh, y'all, right? So in this way, we organize it. Talk about the Eiffel Tower. I'll talk about the bottom of the tower, the middle of the tower, the top of the tower. In order to inform you about the latest Air Jordan, I'll talk about the sole of the shoe what the shoe is made of on the outside, and finally, the springy alloy base that no real other shoe has. Have you ever designed your own car online? Yeah. Okay, it's really fun if you've never done that. <laughs> you can go to any you of the that. major makers, whatever, and you can kind of click and choose. But for example, I, when I was doing it, like I built my Prius online, before I thought how to use Prius online, but it was fun to build it online anyways. So my first thing that I had to do was talk about the exterior of the car, right? And then we choose the interior of the car. So the exterior talks about things like the shape. What color do you want it to be? Do you want it to have a rim or do you not want it to have a rim? The interior of the car could be things like the materials, the seats, the technology. Then the in inside could be the engine and battery combination, right? And so in this way, I can keep it structured and organized for my audience. That is spatial organization. Disneyland. Sure, I can talk to you about, like, to talk to you about Disneyland, I'll inform you about the characters and the rides and the restaurants. Great. But if we did it today, I'm going to take you on a journey around Disneyland by first starting on Main Street, then moving our way up to Tomorrowland, making our way back to Toontown and Fantasyland, and then finally ending our journey in Coastal. Adventureland and Frontierland. Does that make sense? And within each of those main points, I can talk about things like the characters you can find, the restaurants, and the rides. At least it gives you a different way of structuring it. Does that make sense to y'all? Yeah. The last way that you can organize is something called topical order. Topical organization can be done for all of them. What, well, Amanda, you just blew my mind. Okay. So if you have a person, you can do chronological or topical. Now you'll know why you wouldn't do spatial. To inform you about the basketball career of Kobe Bryant, I'll talk about the bottom of his career, the middle of his career, and the top. It wouldn't work. Right? 
So we topical order is another way to go. It's what you've been doing this entire time in this class. It's essentially you're organizing your idea around specific topics. This is not a catch-all though. Don't be like, I'm going to go topical because it's easy and it's what I've been doing. Instead, it's a narrowed way to cover multiple topics under one heading. So if I did want to give you an overview to Kobe Bryant, you could say, I'll first talk to you about, or I'm going to tell you about Kobe Bryant by first discussing his basketball career, then discussing his philanthropy, and finally ending on some scam. These three things don't have anything necessarily in common except for Kobe Bryant. And it's an easy way to get an overview of somebody in five minutes, but if you could narrow it down a bit more, it would help you and it will push you into the chronological and spatial a little bit more effectively. Again, it's not the wrong way to do it. Just make sure that when you're doing it, it's for the right purpose of like, I want to talk about a big topic and give you a, a highlight of that. I want to give you a very helpful hint, and I know it's two minutes after, but give me one second. There is a resource here in the world today. Is that on? No? Yeah, it's on. And then it is called Wikipedia. And although we don't like to use Wikipedia for research, I want to show you something really fun about Wikipedia and which you may not have noticed before. Wikipedia, because it is an informative site, also organizes their topics you know, in the same essential way. Have you all seen a Wikipedia before, right? Yeah. But if you go down here, what you may have never noticed is that they have an outline of the material. This outline, this one, two, three, four, five, are typically in topical order that can help you see how you would like to organize your presentation. So sometimes it'll be written in topical order, if you will, so it's early life, oops, sorry, uh, uh, right? But if you wanted to simply do just his professional career, do you see how they do it in chrono, Logical. oh my gosh, chronological order, right? Um, and then you could, of course, do all this fun stuff off the court. But what, if you're thinking about, like, what would my main point be? A really easy way to find out, like maybe I should do these main points. So what has most information? Again, you can do it by the history of it. If you want to do it by lands, like I love. Oh, who would have guessed that they did it like this? I did, because that's how you organize things. Or the background of it, and everything like that. You can do so. So looking at Wikipedia for the purpose of organizational patterns is always helpful. So what I want you to know is that this is your e-companion. This is where you're going to be turning in this assignment by tomorrow. As it says here, tomorrow at noon is when it is due. And if you've never posted to a discussion board before, don't worry, I tell you exactly how to do it. So to post, please click on respond down at the bottom of the page. So you're going to click on this button here and make your class time and your name your title. So it asks for subject line or title, make that your name and your class time. So it's like Amanda, 8 a.m. This is due tomorrow at noon. I'm going to be checking the topic tomorrow afternoon, and at that time you'll get an email from me when I'm done checking. That means you can go back in to the discussion board and look at my reply to your post. See if you need to change anything, see if you need to make adjustments. If you don't need to make any changes, you will see written there, perfect, and then you can be done with your assignment. If you do need to make changes, then you are going to be required to do so by Sunday, March 27th at noon. So I will not write that in your message, but I will say please reply to the changes. So if you're not going to make a new post, you'll simply reply to my corrections and keep it all in the same thread. Um, and then I'll send you another note letting you know that those are all done. If you do not get me the assignment or at all anything up to the discussion board by Sunday at noon, 
simply communicate with me after that via email, as I never go back into the discussion board after everything has been checked. You can cut and paste the material down here, just cut it and paste it, and then put all of your own information here. Does this make sense to y'all? Go out, get your topic that you love. It's on your email. Yeah, you can also do that.